Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how to test this little React modal component using Cypress component tests. So let's get started. All right, so to get started, you're first of all going to need to npm install Cypress as a dev dependency. I've already done that, so it goes quite fast for me. For you, it will probably take some time because you'll first of all need to install all of Cypress, which is a bit big. But don't worry, it will continue working, even though it seems like it's done. And after that, we're going to head to our package.json and actually add a new script in here. I'm going to call it test. You can, of course, call it Cypress or whatever you want. The important part is that it's going to run Cypress open. And now if we just execute this by saying npm run test or whatever your command was, then you should see that the Cypress window will open right in front of your eyes. We can decide between end-to-end -end testing and component testing. We'll, have used, uh, we'll, of course, use component testing because we want to test our React component. Now it automatically detected that I'm using React and Vite, so that's awesome. We can hit next step, then we can hit continue. And it will basically create all the configs and download all the dependencies we need automatically because it will of course need extra dependencies because it wasn't made to work with react right cypress is the end-to-end -end testing framework which just recently got component testing as an extra feature and now we can go ahead and create a little spec so a test file here which is just going to be called model.cy.jsx the jsx is important because vite expects every file containing jsx to be called jsx and because we want to render our component we of course going to need some jsx in there so now we can hit create spec, we can run the spec, it shouldn't really do anything right now, but we can now start actually coding. Let's head back to VS Code, and now in our Cypress directory that was just created, we should also find the file that we just created. And now, just to test it out, we can just mount any old React right here, so we just mount a h1 called hello, head back to our browser, this is actually a browser that's controlled by Cypress, so don't use it for normal stuff, use a second browser for that. And as you can see, we've just mounted the component and everything looks absolutely fine. So now let's just import our model. And now, because our model of course needs a button that externally opens and closes it, we're gonna need a wrapper. So const wrapper is gonna be an arrow function. And this arrow function will basically just return our model and you need a use state. So const open and set open. We're basically rebuilding the um, deployment you just saw, but as the most minimal option, because we of course don't need anything fancy right now. So the basic thing we're going to do is we're going to create the model and the button and it's just going to get an on click event that says okay set open to true and now we can say okay the model has two props open and on close. Open is of course just going to be open and on close will be an arrow function that runs set open false. And now we can just check that it works the good thing is that, as you just saw, Cypress already um, renders all this stuff for us, which is quite nice. We might also want to actually render this wrapper right here. Sorry for that. And now if we just go ahead and head back here, we can see that use state is currently not defined because I missed that. So we're just going to do that real quick. Import use state from React. And now if we open it once more, we can see our open button. And it displays our X because I didn't put any content in the model, which is fine. We can fix that up real quick and we'll just call it test content. Now, what we want to do is actually write tests for this component. And one of the tests we could do is actually just um, checking if the component renders initially. So the way that this works is you have a describe block and an it block, just like in um, Jest, if you know that. And you can just say it should not render the model initially. And what we're going to do is we're going to say cypress.contains and here we can just check if a certain string exists on our website. And we should get an error because it doesn't. It tries around for a bit and then it finds that that one doesn't exist. So the way that this is going to work is contains.should not exist. And now if we run this again, then we see it doesn't exist, so our test passed. And this is basically our first test. So now we can write the next one, which would open it, so should render the modal when it's open. So for this we can just say cy.get and um, there are multiple ways to do this. We could for example um, just run a container query here so we can say get button and then just say um, const button equals this button of course and then just say button.click. This is one way of doing it which should actually work. As you can see it's now rendering but our test is now not passing because we say that it shouldn't exist. So the way to fix it is we'll just remove this. And now we've got a passing test again. So we've basically already got two tests, but there are of course more ways of doing this than just this one. Because another way you could do this is by actually giving your button an ID. Quite obvious, right? ID equals test button. But both of these are not 
all that nice because you're relying on the actual HTML. And if you need um, something in the model, then you probably wouldn't want to give it IDs because if you create two models, then yeah, that's not going to work right with IDs, right? So just to test it, we're going to make a container query to a hashtag test button, run this again, and as you can see, the test still passes. But a really good way of doing this, let's say if you wanted to actually get into the model, which we're going to do shortly, is to um, use custom um, types right here. So the button is going to be left like this, but what we're going to do now is um, the model should not render when the close button was clicked. And to do that, we're just going to head to our model, and our model has this little close button right here. So we could access this using model close as a class name, so dot model close, but we're not going to do that because, as I said, this might change, like some developer might change it and we don't want it. So to do that, we can just say data test ID equals close button. And now to actually access this, we can just say, okay, head back to our model and we can say, okay, const close equals cy.get. So basically we put um, these brackets around there and say data test ID equals close button. This is the same way you'd access this using CSS. And now we can just say, okay, close.click. And then we can say it should, of course, not exist anymore. So basically what we're doing is we're first going to check, does it render initially? No. Does it render when I open it? Yes. Does it render when it closes it again? No, it shouldn't. And if we just check this, then everything seems to work great. And also one other benefit you get is you can actually check what it did if, um, for example, your tests aren't passing. So if we just open the third test here, we can see, okay, it first mounts it. We don't see anything yet. Then it gets the test button. As you can see, it's highlighted on the right. Then it clicks the test button. You will also see a before and after, which is quite nice. Then it gets the close button which is highlighted again, then it clicks it, then it checks if it actually contains the text, and it finds, no, that text is nowhere to be found, so the test passes. And that's basically all the magic behind this. So I think this is an awesome tool, and I hope you do too. But if you want to get even deeper into testing, then maybe you should check out this video, where I'll show you how to use Jest.